I hope the next time there's an invocation, when you bow your heads in prayer, you see the blood on your hands. A breaking point in Montana. The Montana House will not be bullied. Debate over a controversial transgender bill boils over that bill, now law like nearly a dozen others across the country. My community is scared. This is the planet Earth, where God created men, male, and women, female. Now on Scripps News, inside the fight over trans rights, featuring interviews with Montana Representative Zoe Zephyr and Montana House Speaker Matt Regeer, and a brand new original Scripps News YouGov poll revealing where Americans stand on the issue. This is a Scripps News special, Transgender Rights, America's Divide, reporting from Montana's capital, Maritza Giorgio. Thank you for joining us for this Scripps News special. Across the country, at least 16 states have now passed some form of a restriction on gender-affirming care for minors. That may include medications for the delay of puberty. Some states like Oklahoma choosing to make it a felony for medical professionals to provide this kind of care. Others like Arkansas allowing transgender adults to file medical malpractice lawsuits against their doctors if they think the treatment they received as minors harmed them. The national debate over transgender rights, especially in teenage years, hit a flashpoint here in Helena, Montana. In just minutes, new insight for Montana House Speaker Matt Regeer and Representative Zoe Zephyr. But first, where does America stand on the issues? We're finding out in an original Scripps News YouGov poll conducted this past week. Ava Joy Burnett has those new poll numbers for us tonight and where the fight stands right now across the country. A scene becoming more common outside state capitol buildings across the country. Protesters outraged as legislators inside move to pass new laws restricting transgender rights. Most of those bills limit gender affirming care for transgender youth and restrict their participation in school activities like sports. Despite the viral scenes of protest, a new Scripps News YouGov poll shows Americans largely support these types of laws. 44% of Americans support laws restricting transgender care for minors, compared to 34% against. 75% of Republicans support the more restrictive laws, so do 45% of independents. On the other hand, 60% percent of Democrats are opposed. They're seeing that people are responding strongly to the framing of this is about protecting our kids. Political strategists and activists say that school shutdowns during the pandemic led more parents to become involved in schools and local politics. Conservative activists say the Supreme Court's ruling overturning Roe v. Wade in 2022 also removed a traditional talking point used by Republican candidates to woo socially conservative voters, leading many candidates to hone in on gender identity and so-called woke culture. We bill ourselves the NRA for families. We want to fight to make the family the most uh, powerful special interest group in the country. Conservative grassroots organizations like the American Principles Project are helping to give candidates who support anti-trans laws a boost. The group spent more than $15 million in the 2022 campaign cycle on ads in battleground states like this one in Georgia. Joe Biden and the Democrats are going to teach critical race theory in our schools put men in girls' sports, and even push sex change surgeries on kids. I think that's been our biggest contribution has been showing these politicians how to fight on this issue and win. According to our Scripps News YouGov poll, most Americans support a federal ban on trans females competing in school athletics. That includes a majority of Republicans at 83 percent, also a majority of independents at 58 percent. One in three Democrats support such a ban. Now, some of the top Republicans eyeing the White House in 2024 are mounting campaigns built in part on anti-trans pledges. Strategist Mike Ricci says this issue will likely push Republican primary candidates further to the right. You're going to continue to see it uh, a race to you know, who's fighting wokeness the most, who's protecting our kids the most. And legal experts are saying many of these new laws are likely to be challenged all the way up to the U.S. Supreme Court. But John Schweppe is saying he is confident that these laws will hold up in court. 
Ava Joy Burnett, Scripps News, Washington. The fight over transgender rights has largely been a priority in state legislatures controlled by Republicans, and that includes here in Montana. Where House Speaker Matt Regeer, a Republican, led a charge against the only transgender woman in Montana's House. He accused Representative Zoe Zephyr of breaking decorum for saying Republicans will have blood on their hands for banning gender affirming care for transgender minors. He wouldn't call on her to speak on the floor. Then, when protesters demonstrated days later, Zephyr stood still on the House floor, a microphone held above her head. That move led Republicans to prevent her from even coming to the House chamber, and she says even deactivated her security key card for accessing the building. Tonight, Representative Zephyr and Speaker Regeer are appearing in one-on-one -on -one interviews from right here in Helena. In moments, you'll hear from Representative Zephyr, but first, we begin with the Speaker. So I want to go back to that moment. I mean, it happened right behind you where you're sitting. Um, the comments Representative Zephyr made saying she hopes that backers of this specific bill that would um, ban certain care for transgender minors would see the blood on their hands. Did you immediately think she's violating decorum? We've had uh, people on both sides of the aisle here, representatives, this session and every session that are outside of decorum, that say things that are offensive, that turn up the temperature, and that's really why we have a whole chapter uh, in our House rules on decorum, and that's to keep the temperature down. That's to, that we can still debate then and not, not lose control. What was out of the norm was after those comments were made, uh, the next day even, that uh, the representative did not uh, not want to apologize, did not want to turn that temperature down. It was almost like Representative Zephyr wanted to amp up uh, the temperature. And when that's an attitude of a representative, I have not seen that before. So Representative Zephyr has noticed, and so have we, that you only refer to her as the representative or Representative Zephyr. And I'm wondering if you consider her to be a woman. Um, you know, right now, uh, my role as Speaker of the House, and once again, I am not, uh, I'm not here to incite or uh, pick any, any fights that need to be picked. Uh, my job was to respect all 100 representatives, uh, to do that, to hold, um, to hold the safety and dignity of the House. Um, so I think an issue that um, isn't forefront and in front of us, I'm not going to, uh, not going to make that an issue I need to deal with with what's, what's ahead. So let's talk a little bit more about the care for transgender minors. Sure. What is that, what is that, how would you define that? Sure, and this is, what, this is what's interesting. I think it was just just short few years ago, it seems like, I remember growing up that um, it was uh, youth that came and said, I, I hate my body or I don't like myself here it was i remember the narrative was no you're you're beautiful the way you are right that that you affirmed uh the way they were born the way they were created and uh the self-esteem of of trying to bring that back and that has really shifted just quickly and recently into uh, a 13 year old girl or boy that comes and says i hate my body now it's now you've got this huge not huge group very loud group i would say that is that will say yes we affirm that hate of your body and we'll help you change we'll help you change that that narrative has been turned upside down well i don't think dysphoria is always i hate my body i think sometimes it's i don't feel like this is the body i should have been born into i don't identify with this body or i um, don't feel like i am who i'm supposed to be but they don't like it that's the point we all have one one body that's the reality of it um, and to say well I don't like that I hate that um, now you've got this loud group that is saying yes we'll actually surgically change you but you also have people with kids who are really struggling and wanting this kind of treatment even reversible treatments like hormone therapy so how well, do you I'd say that's debatable too and I think that middle path is uh, minors I mean that's what we were talking about with the legislation that passed here of just minors uh, doing irreversible damage and that's where um, I think the compromise if you call it a compromise was of uh, just wait until you're a legal adult. So I know um, a lot of the Republican platform in recent years has 
advocated for government staying out of people's lives. So I'm wondering for you, how does that square with laws passed here, you know, getting between parents and their kids and even doctors with some of these laws? Look at the notion of our Constitution. It's to refrain government. And we passed a lot of bills this session that limited local government's overreach onto people's lives, limited state government's overreach onto people's lives. Um, so that notion, too, of uh, less government, I believe, was very much played out this session, even though we had a high volume of bills. But as to, as to the proper role of government, then, uh, getting involved in situations like uh, surgery, irreversible surgeries on, on minors, that, that's a protection thing, and that is, that is a role of government. Um, you take anything from homicide to, to child abuse, the government is there to protect, uh, protect society uh, and protect the citizens uh, of the state of Montana. Do you think on these issues, trans issues, compromise can be found? Um, I think that's really tough. Now, I, yeah, I mean, depending on the issues. I mean, that's a wide open question when you say on the issues. Like if you're saying, hey, on an issue of taking a, a healthy uh, adolescent and doing irreversible surgeries on that adolescent, I don't know how you compromise. So I know that this issue had a significant root in why you joined the political scene. I read a 2016 article in the Daily Interlake that said that the deciding factor for you to run was when that school district in school district five added transgender language to their policy. You said opening doors to a lot of really unsafe policy. And so I'm wondering why this has become such a priority for you in your political journey. Sure. And that's, that is uh, why I started, man, that was back in 2015, going back a few years already. And, uh, that was when this transgender movement was really starting to catch, uh, catch steam and, and catch fire. And I thought, well, I'd read the articles from New York or California. I thought, well, uh, the blue states are really going that way. And that's when our, my, my high school district uh, that I grew up in here in Kalispell, Montana, said, no, we're going to adopt this stuff too, uh, to open the doors to uh, biological males in the shower room with biological females and all of a sudden it hit home of uh, we're coming to a crossroads and that was that was eight years ago um, and and I still think that uh, that temperature is only only turned up and, and and we are I think we are at a crossroads not just here in Montana but uh, as a nation of there are uh, as you said earlier like compromise where you get the compromise at some point all of a sudden either side is gonna say we're not going to compromise. We're going to stand for our youth, and the other one's going to say, no, no, we're not, or I'm not going to speak for them. A quick break, then you'll hear directly from Representative Zoe Zephyr. Where does she go from here? Where does her fight go from here? That's all next. You're watching a Scripps News special, Transgender Rights, America's Divide. Here again, Maritza Giorgio. When Representative Zoe Zephyr used charged words on the House floor here in Helena, Montana last month, it came at a pivotal moment. Her state, like many others controlled by Republicans across the country, in the midst of a fierce debate over transgender rights, specifically providing gender-affirming care to minors. At the center of it, transgender representative Zoe Zephyr. And the only thing I will say is if, I, if you vote yes on this bill, and yes, on these amendments, I hope the next time there's an invocation, when you bow your heads in prayer, you see the blood on your hands. So I want to just take you back to that minute. And, and the moment you actually said, if you vote for this bill, the next time there's an invocation, when you bow your heads in prayer, I hope you see the blood on your hands. Did you have any clue when you said that, that it would lead to all of this? In that moment, I was focused wholly on explaining the real harm that the bill brings. I had spoken on Senate Bill 99 previously, and we had talked about the harm it brings and, you know, suicide statistics and, and the like. But in this last moment, our last chance to really talk about a bill that is going to get my community hurt and killed, it felt integral 
to speak clearly and precisely about the harm. And so I wasn't focused on fallout or what was going to come next. I was focused on standing up for my community and making it very clear to everyone in that building what the results of their vote would be. So the next moment in this fight came a few days later after multiple days of you not being called on, your microphone not being opened up on the floor, and you held that microphone over your head uh, during that disruptive protest in the gallery. When you walked in that morning, did you know that that was planned? I didn't know it was planned at all. I knew there was going to be a rally, um, and there had been an email sent out saying that people may put tape over their mouths um, to signify that I was being silenced. Um, but I had not, um, I had, had no awareness that they were going to chant or do or take any um, actions. So I know you've said many times you wouldn't do it differently, that you're proud of your actions, you're proud of what you did. Do you recognize the criticism by some that by holding that microphone in the air that you were encouraging the disruption? I think when you hold the microphone up in the air, you are standing in solidarity with people who have been stripped of their rights for a duly elected representative to represent them on the House floor. And so when you hold that mic aloft, to me, if you, it's less of encouraging and it's more of being in unity, in the recognition that what was done was counter to the very democratic principles of our country. Is there anything you'd like to say to Speaker Regeer? I would say that there was a lot of ways that this could have been handled. And when we, when I rose up in defense of my community, that's what I was doing. I was speaking to real harm. I was defending my community. And we're elected to have the hard conversations in that building. And I saw the way in which decorum was used to target me yet was not used when in the Judiciary Committee we begged the Republican chair to disallow certain language being used because of the harm it brought, um, because of the damage that it would do for people listening. And we were told a lot of people have a lot of opinions. When you take an action that extreme, what you're really attacking is democracy itself. And that's what I said in my speech during the censure thing. I said, when you gaveled down the protesters, what you were really doing is driving a nail into the coffin of democracy, but you cannot kill democracy that easily. Earlier in a conversation, you talked about your past history as a wrestler. Yeah. And the strength that you carry with you. I'm wondering if you could tell us a little bit about your experience transitioning and what that has meant for your life. So I was proud of the championships that I won as a wrestler and all of that. But the lessons I really learned from sports were to work to be a better person every day. Transitioning is like coming into resonance with your soul. It is finally feeling that true connection to yourself that was not there previously. It opened up the ability for me to truly root myself in my community to find a joy and a meaning that before my transition seemed inaccessible, like talking behind a door or something like that. Do you ever worry about your safety? I focus on the moment ahead of me. I focus on the community work to be done. And that means caring for the people in my community who need help. That means doing the work here that they've elected me to do. I focus wholly on that, and I don't worry about, um, about my safety. I take precautions. Being a visible face in the trans community comes with elevated risks, but you don't let that distract you from the importance of the work. I want to talk to you about a Scripps News YouGov poll just released this week. The numbers look quite different from two years ago with major shifts in Americans' feelings about bills actually restricting trans rights, especially in sports, but also in care for minors, um, with more people saying that they actually support legislation that targets 
trans rights. What do you make of that? What we see right now is that the right is trying to create a boogeyman out of trans people. It is trying to drum up fear around the trans community, much like it tried to drum up fear around the gay community in the 90s. And what we saw in the 90s in their strategy for targeting the gay community, we're seeing now. When you see the same set of detransitioners flown out from hearing to hearing, it is reminiscent of the quote, ex-gays being flown from hearing to hearing to talk about, um, uh, to testify against gay rights. It is similar to language around gay people. They used to uh, slander them and say, quote, they were recruiting. You now hear language saying that trans people are, quote, groomers. This is the same harmful rhetoric that was attempted against the gay community in the 90s, and it will fail for the same reason those attacks failed in the 90s, which is that trans people are in your communities. We are part of your communities, friends, neighbors, colleagues. And one of the things that I will repeat again and again is you are always near a trans person or someone who cares deeply about us, whether you're in a coffee shop, in office, or if you're in the governor's mansion here in Montana. We mentioned at least 16 states have passed laws restricting transgender rights. Well, on the other side, at least nine states now have laws protecting access to gender affirming care. Back from here in Helena in a moment. This half hour, you've gone inside the debate over transgender rights. This issue expected to become central to national political campaigns in the year ahead. Our original Scripps News YouGov poll found more than four in 10 Americans say they support laws that would restrict and or ban transgender care for minors, even with parents' consent in their state. 34% say they oppose such measures. The poll also found most Americans support a federal ban on transgender females competing in school athletics. Scan the QR code on your screen now to see more of our poll results. And that's our time together for this half hour. Thanks so much for joining us for this Scripps News special. From Helena, Montana, I'm Maritza Giorgio.